Okay, this is six scale. Whoops, I can't type. There we go. This is six scale, December 14th, 23. All right, let's start with uh, <clears throat> the performance job review. So we've got uh, OAU updated these. We've got the links. Okay. Let's see if anything has changed. We already talked about this one. I don't see anything. Okay. Um. One thing is this, is this VMI or VM? Oh, this is VM. Okay, yeah, it this needs or anything on the VM as well. Okay, I saw some uh, some change in uh, VMI in the P ninety five creation to running. Oh, I've got two of the same. Okay. Yeah, so if you see around December eleventh uh, or so, we got some clutters of twenty-seven, but it's not a trending line. Just something to keep an eye out. Yeah, we do. Yeah, have a few. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye out then. Let's see what. Let's see if it continues like that. Okay. Like nothing else, though. Okay, everything else looks stable. Okay. All right, good. All right, I don't know if we got Lubo. Okay. Um, while we wait, I can give a quick update. So, okay. um, I was not able to, um get to the, the tasks um, this week. I, I had some uh, things come up, but um, in order so that we don't uh, lose track, I've created um, this issue for the doc update, assigned it to okay. me. And uh, my plan is to start um, a thread with an issue or with, with the for community regarding support for um, KubeWord VMIs uh, okay. so that you know, we can get the discussion started and then I can start working on, on the integration with CI. Um, <clears throat> I did try to set up my CI, uh, the, the, the CI like make cluster up and make cluster sync um, locally. It used to work for me in the past, but I run into some, some problems. So I might ping you and Lugo um, offline on, on this. On Slack and see if I can get that sorted. Okay. All right. So this is the docs, and then and then how about on the K walk front? It the same same thing. Um, I haven't a chance to look at it. Um, sorry, I didn't follow. And the uh, for K walk, your the K walk work. Uh yeah. So, um, as I was saying, I I'll start um a discussion on the. Um, give up community in terms of an issue. I'll see yeah. you guys there as well. Um, the idea is that you know we'll formally discuss it on an issue, and if they are open, uh, which they have shown interest, like we can contribute the code um, in in work and build it from there into the CI. If it feels like it's going to be a while to contribute code there. Then we'll um, create a fork, um, and I'll reach out to Brian and Daniel. That, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Right. Okay. 
Okay, sounds good. All right. Um, I must just Lou Bowie said I'll be here shortly, so I can wait a minute and um, see if he's got an update. <clears throat> um, let's see. One, let me go back to um. So um, I had one more um update. So Lubu and I synced mm -hmm. offline, and we were thinking of um discussing queuing this up for discussion. Uh, this is the the PR that removes uh, node access by introducing a new CR. Um. I wanted to get more context uh, from Lugo and, and have some discussion regarding perf and scale impact from the code changes here. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've looked at this one. Um, it's an interesting idea. I I think like the uh, I yeah. Let's see what we can see. What we can come up with for perfect scale. Yeah. Okay. Um. The other thing was well, since Lou is not here yet, the um, um, we need to well. So our for our one two planning and stuff like I think um. So let's see. The only thing that we don't have um, assigned is this stuff. Um, so maybe I'll be able to take it. I probably won't be able to take it now. At least not for um, probably not till January. But uh, I can look probably look at it in January. I can do these. See how what we can come up with for these. Yeah. Um. I'm not sure. Um. But a question, would it be worth it to create an issue for those? And if those are easy ones, maybe mark it as good first issue. If someone is looking to, you know, uh, dabble and, and, and play with, then they can probably, you know, pick it up. Yeah, I was hoping that we'd get so the people that were interested in doing this would come to the meeting so we can talk about design because I... I mean, unless people know what to do with this, I um, yeah, I at least like to talk about it. But I haven't. We just haven't heard from anyone. I mean, this person um sounded interested interested in doing something, but I I don't know what um I haven't heard from them, so I don't know. Okay. So I don't know. Um. All right. Let's see. Well, actually, while we wait, um, let me go back to this. While we wait, um, maybe we can talk about this. Um, maybe we can talk about what's missing. So. Let's see. So we have keyword control plane. Let's see, let's start with this one. Here, I'm going to copy. Okay, so how would this work? How would this work? So add metrics for Qvert, control plane, mem, CP usage. Um, let's go look. I know there's a metrics package here somewhere. I want to see what we have. Maybe we can diagnose what's missing.
Yeah, I'm curious yeah. if we should look for the collector, metrics collector that runs after the test. Yeah, um, we can look. At, well, so I wanted to see was the, um, I swear there at one point there was a metrics package in here somewhere. And oh, monitor. That's the, okay. That's what I want to see. Okay. So, um, Okay, so we have Red API of our controller. So let's see. All right, so what is it that we have? Uh, I don't know why I can't do this. DM created total. This is for this is for the Red API. Is that really it? We just have virtual. We have a count of the. I, I don't know what's supposed to be here. Okay. Let's go to the controller then. Is this like a symlink or something? Why is this like this? No idea. I'm checking on my set. That's oh. weird. Okay, here we uh, have. It opens um... up for me. Oh, it does? Oh, okay. Yep. What's in there? Are there are there more metrics? So for the word API, um, we just have it. Oh um, no, we just have VM. Oh, we are importing it from somewhere. Give me one second. Yeah, it's a VM created counter for Vault API and for Word controller. It's okay. the... I mean, what I'm seeing is like we we don't have so there. Kubernetes has pod. Does it have pod level um memory usage metrics? I don't. Yes, it does. Okay, so we can. Oh yeah, of course it does. So okay, so what we can get is the so when we say metrics to control plane mem CPU usage, um, Kubernetes, Kubernetes already has this right for our components. We can get that. So we need to define this further because that's yeah, that's what I was thinking. So um, at a high level, what I'm thinking is that our test suit, it fires a bunch of VMs, right? And then it collects the Prometheus metrics from, from Prometheus and then puts it in that audit file. Um, what we need here is while it collects those keyword related metrics, it should also collect uh, pod level metrics from uh, okay. that are exported by QB. Okay, so this is, Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to um go to the the parse scale test and find out how we collect it. I think we'll get further along from there. All right. That okay, there we go. That that clarifies this. Okay. Good. So I think that'll do. So then that means that um, all right, so the work here is just to get um, to scrape this from Prometheus. It's um, it's just in the tooling. Okay. That that's already better. Um, I'll go to the second one. Report after each release. Keyword's control plane mem CPU usage. Oh, okay. These are the same ones. So this is this is okay. This is why I was going to get these. Let me. Oh, I can't. I'm not signed in. Okay. I need to edit this. So the what needs to be done is like. These need to be combined because this is um we have one. We just need to we need to do two. I think the second might be for the perf scale uh collector, the the utility that exports exports it on on our graphs. Um so once we have the data in the file, we then run this tool on a weekly basis, right? That has a hard coded list of um, hard-coded list of metrics to export, we'll have to add it there as well. That's yeah, why okay. I had it 
separate. Okay, then uh, we just need to change the language here. This needs to be so we get we get this into our storage, and then we have our tooling that scrapes it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, let's go to the next one then. Okay, so how about this one? So vert launcher mem and CPU usage. So we have pods. We have the pod metrics. Um, so what I was thinking for this one is like, yes, we could get the pod metrics and we can export them in the, in the job, just like we're doing here. Um, but it would also be interesting to see the the guess CPU num usage and the the vert launcher process CPU num usage. So we could do this in the same way, right? As this the first two. Um, or maybe what we do is we include for a launcher as part of this, the part of the control plane here, but the the part that I specifically would like to have in front launcher is that we have um as we get the guest we get we get what's inside the pod then we get it broken down by each of the components inside yeah that I think that makes sense. Do you think uh that might be um we might be able to get to the second part that is breakdown of the guest um this release? I'm I'm concerned. Like uh, this is turning out to be quite some work. We might have to, you know, put that as second priority. So if something has to drop, then it can. I don't well, know. I think, I think I think the um, to me this this the first one doesn't sound like too much work. Um, like the the, the tooling change and then um, like it's two changes: the tooling change and then the thing that scrapes it. So I guess two tooling changes. That's not so bad, right? This is the right. So this is the hardware, which is what you're getting at. But I, th I think though that I think this one would be. I this is the one I'd like to see the most because I like we right now we don't account for uh, when we decrease memory or CPU overhead. We have no way to do that, and it would be good to start seeing this and, and start seeing why. We only, we only okay. catch increases. So there is a catch uh, because you don't have these metrics. So for the guest, you partially have them, but for the build launcher process, you don't have any. Where do we get the guest? You said we have the guest memory usage. Where do, where is it? Um, getting it, and reporting it? So it should be exposed by the handler. Okay, so handler has it. Okay, so then that would mean so we need vert handler. So uh, how you can probably hmm. because you have the memory of of the whole container, right? And you have the memory of the guest. So if you basically subtract the guest, you get the the other processes, which is like libvirt, launcher, and such, which could be enough. For our, for our use case. Sorry, repeat that again, Lugo. Uh, so you have the guest, guest metrics, right? And mm -hmm. uh, and you have the whole container. So launcher, launcher processes, libvirt processes, and the guest. So if you if you take the total and and uh, do minus the guest, right? So you subtract the guest, then mm -hmm. you get uh, what the memory usage of all the other processes in the pod. Okay, so that gets us over our overhead. Okay, so all right, so we need to we need to do that calculation then. So
Oh, looks like we lost Ryan. Yeah. I was wondering if it's me or um, it's Ryan. Oh, there we go. I, I lost my internet in a second there. A few seconds, actually. Okay, let me share again. I don't know what happened. Okay. Um, so I, I, what I was saying was, I, I think then it sounds like we have the metrics. So we don't, we don't need that much of a code change to the, to the metrics. We just need to, we just need to calculate this overhead and we need to export it. And then we need to export the, um, uh, the vert handler stuff. And then we need to make sure our tools understand and, and get it into the graphs. So it sounds like it is going to be similar actually to this first one. Okay, that's good. I think then. Okay. Yeah, I mean. So I think if, then the yeah go ahead. I mean, if we have the promo tables, which is scraping all the metrics, then it's going to be easy because we are just going to scrape the central promo tables, and that's it. Okay. So then I think like once we have that, I think we need to get this, and then we can start on this one. So. We'll see what we can come up with. I mean, I have no idea. Like, this is very vague. It's, it's. Let's, let's see what it is. Like, I think we need to see what it is. See what it is over, over the periods of time, and then we can look at ways to maybe really define this. Maybe you want to relax this point because in, in a, in the time we have for the, for the one point two, it's maybe we will be able to look into areas which we can you know, or which could possibly reduce the memory overhead, but I don't think we could so also fix it in the, in the 1.2 uh, time frame. Well, that's okay. I mean, I guess what I'm thinking is that we can, we can always carry this forward. Like, I, I think this is like a good one that we, one that we continue as like a goal of, of this, of this group where we're always going to be looking for to increase performance and scale and reduce our memory footprint. I think it's just that me mentioning it here is, is more of like this is adding to our list of things that we want to keep in mind and and track which we need this first and then we can look for these ways and spend some time on it maybe we'll get some time at this this in one two maybe we won't but the whole point is is like we'll we will get to it i think it's a continuous effort okay sounds good to me okay and then last is the we've got the clockworks which we which we talked about so i think i think then what these four come out to is i, I think this is um it's right. It's just changes to our tooling. It sounds like we just need to mess around with Prometheus a little bit and with our tooling and get the stuff exported. So, and create some graphs. So that's actually not, that's not so bad for, for code changes. Okay. All right. I'm glad we were able to scope that a little bit. I think that, that at least makes it clear in my mind what we need to do. Okay. Um, Lubo, since, um, since you're here, do you want, did you have uh, time to talk about this, uh, the, Bird handler design. Did you make any progress on this? So I did, but actually I found um, one problem which I did not um, get to solve yet. So um, yeah, I mean, mainly I, I'm, I'm progressing, I would say, but uh, just not fast enough uh, due to all the other duties I have. Um, funny enough, I found um, a lot of code which can be removed. Uh, so I think that at least um, good, good part. So do you I mean keep... like what, what do you mean remove like from from where? Uh, so from the code base uh, altogether. From the oh, from Kubert. When you're when yes. you're digging around. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, for example, yeah, I, cool. I I copy pasted an example into the chat. Um, was it a good one? Yeah. Um, and. This kind of things is uh, something which you, I would need to work around. And now, because I've removed it, it's it's solved already. Uh, so that's a good part. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. I guess what we'll do, Lubo, we'll we'll keep carrying this one forward. So, uh, and then when you when you feel good about the design, we'll we can talk about it. All right. All right, Alay, you had this one. You wanted to discuss the node access over launcher with Lubo. Yeah. 
So, um, Lubo, just to give a context around around this, um, <clears throat> this PR, um, we went through this a um, few weeks back, and we are wondering if this will cause a part and scale impact. Um, so, in in that light, we wanted to get uh, some more context around what are the you know what is the benefit we are getting out of of this um the, the security threats that we would avoid and and the the scale impact uh, or fan scale impact from from this and potentially you know um what would we do to make sure that uh, we can have like a, a park and scale test or something run so that um, it, it's safe to you know go ahead with the changes. Okay, so uh, to the first part, uh, I copy pasted a, a link to basically um, already published uh, CVE we have on our project. Um, so the impact is if you get to, or if, if an attacker gets to compromise one of your nodes, it, it will give, uh, give them a um, powerful enough service account, which they can use to further uh, escalate the privileges. Um, I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, it's written up pretty good. So if you want to uh, go deeper, I think it's good to re good to read later. Um, now I think this is not only Qbert problem. There were or there are uh, a lot of daemon sets which are designed in the way, in this way. Um, so I'm not saying it's therefore it's a, like uh, less risk, but there are some mitigation you you can have. Uh, one of them is also listed in the the CVE, and that's when you use the third party, I think it's called Gatekeeper, where you can basically, uh, yeah, forbid these kind of uh, escalations. Um, no. Yeah, awesome. So that's very helpful, thank you. But the, I, I did have a follow-up question on this. So, <clears throat> We are assuming here that a node gets compromised and um, somehow the attacker has access to the service account of a uh, kubeword handler um, via yes. that compromised node. Um, yes. So there is a kubelet configuration um, with, with a kubelet serve like whatever power kubelet has, there is a con cube config file on the node with, um, you know, authentication secrets to that um, kubelet powers, which is used by the kubelet to, you know, do its thing on on the nodes and the parts. Yes. Do you right. think that the CVE makes a distinction where they are granted where due to the compromised node and getting access to the word handler? The, the user, well, the attacker has more powers than what the kubelet uh, cube config already blesses on the node. Yeah, correct. So um, you you would have the same problem with kubelet, but because kubelet or Kubernetes have a built-in protection against this, they don't care, right? They, you can just manipulate the one node, which is owned by, by the kubelet. But because our service account has the rights to write and read the node. It's basically uh, as as if this uh, protection would be turned off on the kubelet. Does it make sense? Uh, so if I'm understanding correctly, the kubelet service account, well, the kubelet cube config will only be applicable to patching one node whereas our service account can patch any nodes in the cluster. Is that yeah. the distinction? Okay. Yes, that is correct. How, how does that work, Lubo? How does Q, how is the Qlets? So it's, is, a, it's, it's a, it's a build. Yeah, so it's a built-in mechanism when uh, each, each kubes config or service account for a kubelet 
has also a signature of the node. And therefore the API server can check if if the if whoever is updating a node is is this has the signature, right? So they can basically do auto authentication of the of the kubelet. And then if it's uh, if it's not the kubelet, um, if it's not the kubelet which owns the the node, then they just reject the, the update. And this isn't something that that is exposed anywhere. No, unfortunately, unfortunately, no. Um, so Does I was the community thinking, like have any plans? Like, do they? You yeah, know, so they like. I I so the answer is I don't know. Uh, I think it would be, I think it would be really uh, powerful, um, but I did not try to actually sell it. That's uh, so. Maybe. What I think could be a way is if somehow Kubelet can sign a token for for the service account, and then that way you know that you know this token is only meant for requests coming from. Uh, service account on this node, then you can probably identify, you know, within the service account, that is word handler service account, what node this is coming from. And then you can stop the attack vectors from there. But you guys are right, like this will require uh, Kubernetes support Yeah. underneath us. So that's why... That's why we took this approach where we can deliver it in a oh, uh, it's it's open for a half a year. So it's not fast, but uh, like faster um, than the Kubernetes could probably deliver it. Yeah, you um, need this multi tenancy. That's interesting. Okay, sorry. I, uh, yeah, that's, it's kind of, it's, it, it's, it makes me curious because this is, there's always complaints about multi tenancy and other stuff. And Kubelet has, Here's Kubelet sitting on a solution, and it's not generally available through a lot of the other APIs. That's interesting. Yeah. Kind of Actually, I now that you remind me this, I'm probably going to um, ask some people around if this is something which would be acceptable. I I think One more... like, I think Lubo. It's the, the sorry. Like, like I think Lubo. Like like when thinking about multi tenancy like that to me is the thing that the use case besides i mean the security right is important but like if you were a lot of people are doing multi tenancy with multi cluster but if you were to attempt to do multi tenancy which is something that's least interesting to me and probably a lot of other people you'd have to have this it's just funny how that the solution itself is how the problems already solved and there might be even other ones like this that the cube yeah. has that are not shared across the APIs. It just it's kind of funny. I bet there is a there's a bunch of these. So if you can't if you're not able to sell it or if you talk to people and you're not able to sell it by security, I mean multi tenancy is a good argument for it too. Yeah, let's see. I can keep you updated. By the way, this this kind of problem, um I found a KubeCon talk, a really good one. I can share it with you later. Um they're basically saying that every uh, every managed cluster, Kubernetes cluster, was using some kind of daemon set which had powerful enough uh, service account for exploiting it this way, the same way. Wow. Um, yeah, so I look at one more question. Uh, was there an alternate approach considered where you would create one service account, but like the KubeWord operator, when installs the uh, KubeWord stack, creates one service account for each node and somehow mounts that service account to the daemon side word handler part. Uh, yeah, it was considered. Uh, I can tell you why we did not pick it. Uh, so if we would do it, we would basically need to re-implement the daemon set controller because we, we are using it right now to deploy the video handler. Um, and that's it. That's kind of, um, yeah, and it, like we would need to manage all the service accounts. So for each service account, we would need to uh, 
generate these uh, R bugs and keep it all updated and, and all all these things. I think realistically we would maybe you know um, spend double the time on it probably. Uh, but that's a one time installation time uh, issue, right? It will not cause. No, uh... no, no, not really. Because you, so you can, uh, you can add new nodes. You can remove new nodes. You need to, um, you need to think about like um, if this go down. You need to, well, yeah, kind of like, like basically replicate all the features which demo set has. Yeah, that's that's true. So. Like we definitely don't want to re-implement uh daemon set uh, logic. Um, we so what I was thinking is that if we can implement uh, uh an out of band controller which takes that service account and puts it on the node, uh, then we don't really have to use the daemon sets uh where you get the service account via a file on the on the node. So you probably can circumvent uh, the service account name field in, in the pod template. Right, so th this is essentially how Kubernetes does it when it populates that cube config file on each node. Um, we will populate a similar uh, cube config file via that controller with that RBAC and then the node mounts that volume. Yeah, but you, I mean, um, you, you're still using the daemon set, so each pod will have the same service account. No, because we have mount, the controller that I'm talking about, it has mounted different uh, cube configs for different pod, right? So when the daemon set rolls out, uh, I the... mean on the node. Yes. Oh yeah, but we you would need to also distribute these uh, service accounts somehow. Yeah, that's and... that's what the out of band controller will do. Yeah, but you would also need to uh, rotate them and uh, things which Cuba does. So. Uh, I'm not sure. Is, the... is, is what you're saying like essentially what? Yeah, I was gonna say what is what you're saying essentially doing what Cuba does? Mm, not really. So from what I know, service account tokens they don't get uh, rotated over time. That feature has not made it in oh, really? uh, Kubernetes yet. Yeah. Uh, so uh, at least that's what I am aware of last. Um, yeah, I'll go double check that just so we don't build this on wrong assumptions. But once a service account is created, you you can you know have it unless it gets deleted. So we can. So what I'm thinking is that we can create a controller which extracts that token from that service account and populates it on on a node and it does it for different service account for different nodes. And then when you run the pod with that volume mount on that node, uh, it will be able to, you know, just have access to one uh, node patch. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um... That could work if, yeah, that could work, but still we, yeah. So yeah, I, and I, I really, the reason why I think this approach might be uh, worth considering is that if we can solve this for word handler, we can solve it for any other daemon set, right? So um, we can probably implement this for any daemon set that requires privileged 
uh, access to to nodes and other um, platform related apis so it like the goodness out of that will not just be limited to word handler you can apply it elsewhere Busted uh, what is being used, but it's uh, it's service account token volume projections, and those expires as far as I see. So you would need to also um, implement the expiration. Still could be solvable though with the way you're saying away. You would just have to implement the rotation logic. Yeah. And this kind of makes me think of like QBarback proxy essentially. Like it's a project that that is effective at solving something in the community that that like eventually hasn't made its way to one of the Kubernetes APIs. Something really effective that can be used in a lot of places. Yeah, I mean, this could be, this is kind of neat. It's, it's definitely a possibility here. So, um, Lugo, um, do you think we can discuss these things in, in a design document prior to going ahead with, with the implementation? Uh, I, in my opinion, it might be worth it to, to consider um, all the options available at hand just or maybe even you know consider discussions and guidance from uh, the the kubernetes folks and move forward we can have a look on what we can do um i kind of wanted and few people uh, want want wanted to in the in the 1.2 release, so um, I mean, you, Lubo, you might you might be able to do you might be able to do this relatively quickly, even if you don't have the um, like even if you don't have the um, the rotation, like you might get like maybe there's a way you can give um, tokens that don't expire or something, and then try and you know like the I like will I, like it might be worth talking about just because um, the cost of carrying like the cost of carrying something like this we want to be sure that that it's the it's worth the cost. Yeah, maybe we can talk about the cost, but I think it's not it's not that high uh, as it can seem in the in the first place. Well, not just I mean not just like the not even just the personal skill aspect of it, it's the it's the code aspect of it, the the um, maintainability of it, anything like that. And I'm sure it is maintainable. It's the it's it's the the code contribution that comes with creating a CRD, a new controller for it, stuff like that. Like you're already doing this and and I and what Elaine's like suggesting is that um, you essentially create a project that can be used by other projects. So sharing that responsibility. Yeah. Um, uh, by the way, I, I, I did share with you the, the design document, right? Is it here? Is this it? Yes. This is, this is the one. Okay. I mean, it's it's not it's not the complete. It's not the most complete thing I brought. I need to admit. So, just. Uh, Throw a bunch of questions, please, and I, I will I will write them. Like I will answer them. Okay. Cool. But definitely I'm going to uh, reach out to folks in, in Kubernetes like um, 
if we can get something in, that would be that would be nice. But again, I think it's so uh, it will need to go through the you know alpha beta and, and then graduation kind of thing. So we're right. probably to talking about solution in a year. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think that's good. I, so, I mean, you can put your comments on the document and let's see um, an yeah. alternative approach. And then maybe when Luba goes and discuss it with the Kubernetes folks, it, all of these things can get brought up and let's see what they say. Maybe they'll give us an idea of what they're thinking long term. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Cool. All right. So for um, for the next week, um, I think I said this last time, this was going to be our last one for the year. So the 21st is the next week, next Thursday, and the following one's the 28th. Um, I'm not going to be around next Thursday, and then the one following weekend, um, the following Thursday, I think most people are around. So, well, this will be our last one for the year. So the next meeting we'll do in um, on January 4th, so the first week of uh, January, we'll meet again. Enjoy Good. the holidays. Happy holidays, folks. Cool, guys. Same to you. I'll talk to you guys later. See you in the new year. Okay. See you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.